Thank you. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Charlene Mingus, the Active Transportation Planner at Baltimore Metropolitan Council. We are supporting our member jurisdiction, Harper County, by developing a concept plan for bicycle and pedestrian improvements for US 40 along an approximately five mile stretch from the city of Aberdeen to the city of Havre de Grace. The goal of the project is to develop a concept plan that can guide the um, development of a shared use path that serves bicyclists, pedestrians, wheelchair users, and other active transportation users. We want to thank you for joining us for the first public meeting for the project. Today we'll present existing conditions and the alternative options that have been assessed by the design team. We want to hear from hear from you your questions about the project and the alternative options that you prefer. So before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items to go over. The first is, as I mentioned earlier, that today's session is being recorded and we will post a copy of the recording to the concept plan for bicycle and pedestrian improvements along US 40 project page. These instructions and a link to the project website have been provided in the chat box. Um, all participants are in listen only mode and we're asking everyone to enter questions in the Q&A box. We'll address those questions at the end of the presentation, but feel free to add your questions in the Q&A box at any point during the presentation or after. Also, in the interest of accessibility, live transcription has been enabled for this meeting. To see live transcription, hit the show captions or CC button in Zoom. If you have additional accessibility concerns during today's meeting, please email us 40 bikeped at publicinput.com or drop a comment in the Q&A box. If you have any technical issues, please contact, contact us using the Q&A box as well. Um, <clears throat> so joining us tonight with the Baltimore Metropolitan Council are Regina Aris, Keith Kutrek, and Monica haynes Benketta. From, and also joining us from the project design team, AACOM is Romaine Kessiker, Joss Crumpleton, as well as Danielle Lloyd with Rimline. And they will be giving the presentation tonight. I'd like to take this time to thank Harford County, the city of Aberdeen and the city of Havana Grace for their support. Joel Gallahue, chief of long range planning at Harford County will now share a few words. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, it's, we're really glad to have this project underway. Um, I um, represent the county, but there are two other agencies, local agencies associated with this project, the municipalities of Aberdeen and Havre de Grace. And we've been grateful for their support because this is a regional project. That is what Baltimore Metropolitan Council uh, leads, uh, regional projects. And one of my roles is with the technical committee um, of the Baltimore Metropolitan Council where I serve as the chair. And um, this is, uh, I think the kind of project that we would like to see more of at the technical committee. And we're really glad to have your participation tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jill, we appreciate that. Um, and now the design team will share the presentation. And as a reminder, please add questions to the Q&A box throughout the meeting. Thank you. Hand that off to you all. Hi, I'm Romain Kassiker, the project manager and a landscape architect with AECOM. And our agenda tonight is going to look at a project overview and purpose. We'll look at area plans that have been prepared previously, looking into existing conditions. Then we'll get into the alternative concepts that have been developed and a review of next steps will be presented. And we'll talk about the public comment period and at the end, uh, additional time for questions. The overview of the project is it extends from the Aberdeen train station to Erie Street in Haverty de Grace, just west of the Hayden Bridge. It's about a five mile corridor. Our concept level design for the project will be an asphalt shared use path along US 40. And the goal would be a comfortable, convenient and safe path to create a low stress 
multimodal connector to transit and the nearby neighborhoods. We'll be looking at uh, three options, westbound, which will be the northern side of US 40. Option two will be eastbound, the southern side of US 40. And option three is a partial combination of the options one and two called combined. What is a shared use path? That's also referred to as a trail, but it is a dedicated facility for non-motorized users, pedestrians, bicyclists, rollerbladers, et cetera. And it is a trail that's physically separated from the roadway and motorized vehicular traffic and would typically have an open space or a curb or barrier separating it from the roadway. The minimum recommended width for a trail is 10 feet. Trail will be paved and separated from the roadway. And here are some example photos of constructed trails. As we go through, we're going to have some poll questions that we would like to uh, have your participation in to answer, even though you may have answered it uh, in the uh, online polling. And it will, uh, we'll have a opportunity for you to vote as we go through. And poll question one is, are you interested in this project as a potential user, a nearby resident, a nearby business owner, or other? And we'd appreciate everybody's participation. Hopefully everyone's had a chance to vote on question one. And you can see the results. Looks like the majority would be a potential user of the path. Another aspect for any addition of impervious pavement into a corridor is stormwater management and landscaping. And here are some examples of potential landscaping that could occur in the corridor along the trail. Uh, we use environmentally sensitive designs like bioswales and landscaping while keeping safety and clear zones in, in, the, in mind with the design. The design for these will be determined in later stages of design, but we wanted to give a very broad picture of the concept of what stormwater and landscaping may look like. You have seen uh, in the median of US 40 that the State Highway Administration has landscaping and bioswales in the median uh, that helps soften the appearance and provides some nice aesthetics for the drive through the corridor. To date, we have looked at existing conditions, documentation, we've developed alternatives, and where we are in our process is this public meeting number one. And in the future, we'll be looking at a preferred concept to be selected, then have another public meeting and working on the final concept. Here is another poll question, number two. What do you value most in a shared use path and connection between Aberdeen and Haverty Grace? And there are 
a few options for you to select from. The options include, is it a direct and safer route for all ages, improved access to the train station, improved access to bus stops throughout the corridor, separation from traffic and accessibility. Looks like the majority of the respondents think a direct and safer route for all ages is of high interest. Some of the prior plans that have been completed in the area include the Aberdeen Transit Oriented Development Master Plan from 2012, the Harford Next Master Plan from 16, and the Harford County Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan and its update in 2021. These were considered in preparation of the alternatives you're gonna be seeing today. And now I'm going to turn it over to Josh, our transportation planner, and I'll be interjecting some points as we go through also, and I'll, Turn it to Josh now. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Roe. As Roe mentioned, I'm Josh Cargleton. I'm with AECOM. I'm a transportation planner. Um, I'm going to take over the presentation now and run through um, existing conditions along the US 40 corridor. Uh, on the screen, you can see uh, some existing conditions photos of bicycles, bicyclists and pedestrians along the US 40 corridor, along the shoulder, some using sidewalks. Um, and the aim of this project is, is to improve conditions uh, for these uh, for these users. And you can see in the median of US 40, as, as Ro mentioned a few slides back, um, the landscaping that's currently in place between the corridor of uh, along and between the median along US 40. So the first step uh, was to gather an environmental inventory. Uh, no field surveys were undertaken. Uh, no in-depth survey. Uh, this was all based on readily available GIS information at this point. Um, in later stages of design, that's when more detailed uh, an actual survey would be done in the corridor. Um, but this uh, GIS level survey uh, identified wetlands, floodplains, forests, uh, potentially endangered species in the area, as well as historic properties, just so that the team could get a, a handle on what was, uh, what was existing in the corridor today. summary of these existing conditions. Uh, the posted speed limit on US 40 varies from 30 miles per hour in downtown Aberdeen up to 55 miles per hour, generally between Maryland 22 and prior to Lewis Lane. For pedestrians, uh, there's no sidewalk along most of US 40. There are sidewalks in Aberdeen and Havre Grace, but they're directly adjacent to the high speed traffic. And for bicyclists, shoulders are generally signed for bicycle use. In terms of transit routes in the corridor, we have Harvard, Harford Transit Link local bus, some uh, MDOT MTA commuter bus, as well as the Mark Penn line at uh, the Aberdeen train station. Crash data was looked at uh, between uh, the years 2016 and 2021. Um, these were uh, vehicular crashes. Um, they were looked at and no bicycle and pedestrian crashes were reported during that time in the corridor. Now move into alternative concepts. As mentioned previously, three concepts were analyzed as uh, to date. Option one being westbound US 40 on the northern side of the roadway. 
option two being the eastbound alignment on the southern side of US 40, and option three being a combined option uh, using partially westbound and partially eastbound. As I mentioned previously, a no detailed uh, survey information was obtained. This is a planning level conceptual uh, study. Um, we're looking at a 10 foot wide shared use path with a two foot wide grass buffer between the roadway and the path. Um, where necessary due to environmental constraints, an eight foot minimum wide path would be um, provided. All curb ramps in the corridor would meet ADA standards, including detectable warning surfaces on all ramps. All pedestrian signals will be upgraded with audible signals as well as countdown displays. And as mentioned before, the eastern terminus is US 40 at Erie Street, just west of the Hayden Bridge, instead of at the Hayden Bridge itself. Um, originally, at the, at the beginning of when we started this study, um, we looked at potentially carrying the trail all the way to the Hayden Bridge, but due to the fact that pedestrians are prohibited on the bridge and bicyclists are uh, able to use the bridge um, at certain times, we decided it was in the best interest of public safety at this time to have the Eastern Terminus be Erie Street, just west of the bridge. Um, this does not preclude any future uh, trail uh, leading up the rest of the way along US 40 to the bridge. It's just we're not proposing that piece at this time. And here's another uh, polling question, number three. Uh, would you use a shared use path along US 40 as either a bicyclist or a pedestrian? Likely, unlikely, or unsure? And we'll give you a moment to log your answer. All right, thank you all for responding. Um, likely that most of you would use the shared use path. It's nice to see. All right, um, here's a, a quick visualization of the three concept uh, options that uh, we've been uh, mentioning. Option one in green, the westbound option. Option uh, two, the eastbound option would be purple. And then the combined option is a split between the two with the, you see the orange dash line on the screen with the westbound uh, on the westbound side of the roadway up to Lewis Lane and then crossing at Lewis Lane to continue on the eastbound side up to Erie Street. And uh, it should be noted that a shared use path along US 40 could act as a spine that would make uh, that would enable other connections throughout the area as evident by these uh, the arrows you see coming off of the, the main concept. All right, yet another question. Uh, poll question number four. How would you utilize a shared use path along US 40? And uh, feel free to select all that apply. You don't have to select just one. All right, thank you all for logging your responses. Looks like uh, bikes are the, the top response. Okay. All right, now um, we're gonna take some time and run through each of these options um, and give more details about them, um, as well as some, some constraints and opportunities uh, along the, the corridor for, with each of these options. First, I'll discuss option one, uh, westbound on the Northern side of US 40. Um, 
So when it comes to um, looking at um, roadway alternatives or, or roadway alignments, we use the term typical section. Typical section is basically just a view of the of how the roadway looks under existing conditions or proposed future conditions. So here we have two, we're showing two typical sections. The first is the existing typical section on uh, US 40 and underneath we're showing the proposed typical section with a trail. Um, with this option, we, this is what we call an open roadway section. There is no curb and gutter present. Um, and this is uh, along most of the the middle of the, of the US 40 corridor between Aberdeen and Havre Grace does not have curb and gutter. Um, this is what is represented, uh, what we call an open section. You can see under the proposed, and this would be the same for westbound or eastbound. It would just be a mirror image if this was uh, to show the eastbound alignment. We're looking at the, the westbound side right now. Um, we see the open section roadway without curb and gutter separated by a grass swale area and then the uh, the 10 foot wide shared use path alongside there. We also have uh, the closed section, um, which is the areas of the roadway where there is curb and gutter typically present at the edge of the pavement. Uh, and this is more likely uh, down towards Aberdeen or towards Haver de Grace. Um, in these areas, uh, we have two different proposed options uh, for the, the typical section. The one that this graphic is showing is where uh, some of the wide existing shoulder is utilized. So we would narrow that shoulder space and construct the shared use path using some of that available space. This would be done in areas where it would save uh, potential right of way impacts, uh, where there is uh, other environmental impacts that could be avoided. The other option is to keep the roadway shoulder intact and then separate the, the shared use path alongside the curb and gutter um, with, by keeping the, uh, the roadway and shoulder as is. So what I'll do now is run through the entire alignment from Aberdeen up to Haver de Grace. It's nine plan sheets. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly go through this. Um, and just point out um, some some features along the way and uh, some constraints, opportunities, um, that sort of thing, so everyone can get a, a good idea of what we're, we're looking at at this time. Um, I want to note that at each of the existing signalized intersections, at this case APG Road at the uh, train station, we've called out a, a crossing location. So th these are areas where um, users will be able to switch uh, with a marked uh, crosswalk with pedestrian signals from one side of the roadway to the other um, using the uh, using um, the trail and marked crossings. So I'll start, um, just, I'll just move along. Um, in downtown Aberdeen, we're showing we have a, a dashed yellow line at the beginning of the alignment where there's a wide sidewalk um, in front of some area businesses. Um, the option would either be to utilize that existing concrete as, and, as the uh, the shared use path or potentially narrowing the lanes on US 40 at these locations to accommodate the, the uh, shared use path. And then as we move uh, to the east, you see a solid yellow line and that's where the, uh, the trail, um, the asphalt trail um, would start. Um, and then as we keep continuing east, we would use that existing shoulder for the trail. I'm continuing east along um, the west side of the northern side of US 40 um, at the U at the Maryland 22 uh, on ramp from US 40. Um, we're showing we have a, a safe crossing of the ramp uh, at this location. There's good sight distance for vehicles for pedestrians and bicyclists, and um, the fact that users of US 40 vehicular users are decelerating uh, to take that off ramp. Um, works in the favor of having a, loca a crossing location uh, there be safer. So across uh, the Maryland 22 ramp, continue along uh, the northern side of US 40. Um, you'll notice here that the trail isn't just straight adjacent to US 40. There's little bump outs and things like this. And this is just to call out that uh, where there are things such as turn lanes, um, the, the trail alignment will bump out accordingly to follow. Continuing to the east, um, this is the section of US 40 that I mentioned before uh, and referred to as an open section. 
where um, there's no curb and gutter present, and we would be utilizing that um, the proposed um, separation from the existing shoulder to the shared use path. At this stage, we also called out areas where there may be a potential pedestrian bridge uh, structures necessary. Um, where along US 40, where there are bridges or structures that have a uh, wide shoulder present across them that could be utilized, but there are areas where um, a, a new pedestrian bicyclist structure would be necessary adjacent to the existing shoulder, uh, or in, adjacent to the existing structure because not enough available width is a, is is currently exists to have the uh, shared use path. These large areas of blue represent the 100 year floodplain. We have to take that into consideration when looking at alignment of the trail. So just wanted to point that out. And also we note that there are questions coming in the chat box and uh, we will make note of them as we continue and, and they will be discussed or answered. Very good, thank you. Continuing to the east, uh, we're identifying another crossing location at Oakington Road, uh, the signalized intersection. A uh, For the westbound trail alignment that we're showing now, a crossing is not uh, being shown at Robin Hood Road. There's nothing to connect it to on the other side. So um, you'll note that when we get to the eastbound option where the trail is on the other side of the road, we do propose that as a crossing location. But for uh, this, the, the alignment shown on the screen, uh, there is a crossing location proposed at Oakington. We're also noting at this stage that there are potential areas where there'll be culvert extensions necessary. And we just wanted to call some of those out uh, as an additional um, note that um, there are going to be impacts to culverts, bridges, that sort of thing. We were just trying to call them out at this point. Continuing to the east. Another goal too is to avoid utility relocation, uh, very expensive to relocate the large utility poles that exist in the corridor and the alignment tries to take advantage of the wide shoulder and minimize impacts to avoid utilities and trees and other environmental impacts. All right, as we continue um, to the east, a uh, crossing location proposed at Post Road. This is still the uh, typically the open section of roadway here without curb and gutter. All right. And as we approach uh, Lewis Lane, uh, this is, starts to be an area where we have curb and gutter. We're uh, proposing a crossing location here at Lewis Lane and also identifying that this is a connection point to the on-road East Coast Greenway route that's currently um, present. And here we uh, approach the end of the alignment in Haver Grace, another uh, crossing location at Ostego Street. Um, along with a, another connection to the uh, on-road East Coast Greenway East Coast Greenway route here at uh, Ohio Street. Um, previously, uh, it was noted that uh, Erie Street was the endpoint on US 40. Uh, Erie Street is a divided highway, so no crossing is going to be uh, proposed at Erie Street. Um, along the, the westbound side here, although the terminus, the endpoint is Erie Street along US 40, um, it's recognized that it is potential, it is uh, possible to have a uh, connection to continue along Park Drive here um, to continue up to Superior Street, um, which would then potentially better serve Habitat Grace users coming up Superior Street. Um, you would have the, uh, to be able to access the trail at Superior Street, follow it to Park Drive, and then continue down along US 40. Um, so we did uh, look at that um, and added it to this, uh, the westbound option. So you'll see the end point of, on, along US 40 is at Erie Street, but then it continues along Superior Street as well. Along that area, we also identified another constraint. There are uh, There is a concrete utility pad existing on Park Drive um, where the trail would have to be uh, 
a little less wide. It would have to be eight feet due to that uh, concrete utility pad. And there are going to be other areas of constraints like that. Um, this is just an example of one of them. So that was option one, uh, the westbound alignment along the northern side of US 40. Some opportunities available with this alignment, wide shoulder available to use for the trail, uh, less environmental impacts on this side of US 40, uh, it would require less potential property easements or acquisition, and it's located on the northern side of US 40, which serves a larger nearby residential population, if you look at US 40 as a whole. Some constraints associated with this uh, concept, multiple stream crossings and at least one pedestrian bridge would be required. Uh, there are existing utilities that would uh, need to potentially be avoided or relocated, and some potential low retaining walls may be required as well due to um, grading. So we'll go through the same approach now, um, looking at option two uh, along the eastbound side of US 40. We'll take a similar approach where I'll, I'll run through the different uh, plan sheets and uh, point out some things along the way. So here, if we have a trail on the southern side of US 40 um, in the eastbound direction, we have tra the trail starting on the same side as the train station with a potential crossing at uh, APG Road. Uh, we have the same scenario with uh, potentially narrowing the lanes uh, in this section of US 40 to accommodate the trail or using the existing concrete sidewalk. And then we'll start using the existing wide shoulder for the, the trail. We approach uh, Maryland 22. Uh, you'll see some some crossings here of the Maryland 22 uh, ramp. And then leading up um, for the westbound option, uh, we called out the safe crossing of the Maryland 22 ramp uh, for that alignment. Here, uh, we have a stressful and potentially unsafe crossing of the ramp uh, for Maryland 22. That is not to say it's not possible, um, but it would definitely require more safety measures. Um, we have uh, a downhill roadway with uh, vehicles speeding up to merge onto US 40, along with uh, bicyclists and pedestrians trying to cross that ramp to continue along Pulaski Highway. Um, so potentially unsafe condition, potentially stressful. Uh, it, it would be feasible, but additional measures would definitely be necessary. Um, in this area, some retaining walls would also be necessary due to the environmental conditions out there. Um, and we would also have some potential Amtrak property impacts. Um, with a trail on the southern side of US 40. Likewise, going under Maryland 22 will be complex and will require careful consideration for separation between traffic and the trail for both options discussed so far. Right, that might, that might be uh, additional separation between traffic and the, um, and the trail underneath of Maryland 22 um, or something like that to be determined in later stages of design, but definitely a coordination would be required to look closely at that. All right, moving along, uh, here we start having the open section without curb and gutter uh, along US 40. Uh, and here's the same area with the potential pedestrian bridge that would be necessary uh, to be constructed alongside this existing structure that's not wide enough to accommodate the trail. Crossing location here identified at Robin Hood Road. Turning along, following the side of US 40. Another uh, crossing location here at uh, Post Road. Turning along. Uh, here we have another crossing location identified at Lewis Lane. Uh, Lewis Lane is called out as uh, the connection to the on-road East Coast Greenway route, as well as uh, on the eastbound side where the trail is shown on the screen, serves as a, a nice access point to the middle and high school down Lewis Lane um, with a trail on this side of the roadway. Uh, should be noted, you can see on this screen, uh, just as we pass Lewis Lane heading to the east, you'll see um, there's some forested areas. Just wanted to point out that these are, this is an area probably along the quarter of the most environmental impact that would be required uh, with the, we have some, some forest areas as well as steep slopes and some stream impacts in this area. I just wanted to call out this, uh, this stretch from Lewis Lane uh, to the east um, in terms of this alignment as being an area of potential um, more significant impacts. 
there are there are also n- no sidewalks existing currently in that area, uh, probably due to those constructability concerns. The uh, sidewalk picks up uh, in Havre de Grace, uh, just west of Ohio Street. So in, in this area where the existing sidewalk uh, starts up again. Uh, crossing location identified here at Ostego Street with a connection to the east, on-road East Coast Greenway route. Um, and then up to Erie Street, um, divided highway, as I mentioned before, with no crossing proposed at this area. Um, and for this option, we do um, the endpoint is Erie Street for the eastbound side. So some opportunities for option two on the eastbound side, improved access to residents on the south side of US 40 in downtown Havre de Grace. Um, as I mentioned on Lewis Lane, access to the Havre de Grace Activity Center, as well as the middle and high schools. And we're on the same side of the train station with a shared use path on this side of the uh, roadway. Some constraints, uh, environmental impacts to streams and forests, the Amtrak property impacts, which could delay the project implementation, higher construction costs uh, because of uh, retaining walls and stream crossings, and that uh, potentially unsafe and stressful crossing of the on-ramp from Maryland 22 that we, that we discussed. And we did have a third option we looked at, um, the combined option uh, that you see on screen here. Uh, which was the combined, which was a combination of the westbound alternative from Aberdeen up to Lewis Lane, then a crossing of Lewis Lane, and then following an eastbound alternative from Lewis Lane up to Erie Street. So, take a look. At it. I'm not going to run through all of the. Uh, we've seen each of the the plan sheets that cover each of the the different uh, trail sides up to this point, but I'll just focus on the crossing area itself to give you a visualization of what it would look like with the westbound trail, then a crossing, and then Lewis Lane, at crossing at Lewis Lane, and then continuing on the eastbound side. Um, we have the connection to the on-road East Coast Greenway route at Lewis Lane on, on both sides of US 40, and as well as the benefit of uh, getting that improved access to the middle and high school. Um, the one thing to take into account is the um, this again those are the areas of environmental concern the forest streams and uh, steep slopes are also a concern for this um, option as well. So some opportunities with this uh, combined option. The westbound northern side segment serves the larger nearby residential population along US 40. Uh, switching to the eastbound side provides improved access to Havre de Grace, uh, as well as the, the the improved access to the Havre de Grace Activity Center, middle and high school along Lewis Lane. Uh, some constraints to call out. Um, there's no existing sidewalk from Lewis Lane to South Ohio Street due to significant environmental constraints that I um, discussed a few slides ago. Um, a significant portion of that of the eastbound segment is complex design and construction due to guardrail, steep slopes, forest impacts, that sort of thing. Uh, and it'll come with some higher construction costs due to the retaining walls to reduce some of those impacts. All right, now we've come up to another poll question. Give all of you guys a, a chance to weigh in. Um, for what purpose would you utilize a shared use path along US 40? And for this one, uh, feel free to select all that apply out of the provided options. All right, thanks everybody for responding. Uh, recreation and exercise, um, as well as running errands, commuting to work or school, um, great. All right, and I'll flip the presentation back over to Romaine um, to summarize the opportunities and constraints. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Josh. And 
we covered a, a great deal of information, talked about a lot of opportunities and constraints. And here side by side are the three options, listing the opportunities for each. And we see that option one, again, allows for a wide uh, use of the wide shoulder for the trail. It has less environmental impacts and it has a larger nearby residential population that it serves and probably less potential property acquisition needed for that option. And its constraints, as all three have, are stream crossings and a pedestrian bridge. But it has probably a need for less retaining walls, lower walls than some of the other options. Option two is improved access to residents on the south side of US 40 and downtown Haver de Grace. Good access to the uh, activity center, middle and high school, and it is on the same side as the train station. And its constraints too include more environmental impacts, uh, potential Amtrak property impacts, which could delay the project implementation due to the long duration of property acquisition needs for that, and it has a higher construction cost. And of large concern is the stressful and potentially unsafe crossing of that one ramp from Maryland 22. Option three, the combined option does allow for the trail to serve the nearby residential population on the north side and provides improved access to Haver de Grace and improved access to the activity center and middle school. But like option two, it has the same constraints for the environmental impacts, complex design with retaining walls and because of steep slopes and avoidance of stream and environmental impacts and higher construction costs associated with that. The next steps that we'll be looking at is to collect public input on these alternative concepts, and that's where we are today. We will take all the information gleaned from this, and we'll be reviewing and revising for the next two months any uh, or any needs to modify the alternatives based on input, and we'll be looking. Uh, again to review and revise through February and March of next year and head towards the final concept plan in March of 23. And we're nearing the end of our poll questions, just a few left and number six is select the ways that you think a shared use path along US 40 may impact you. And it's multiple choice and select all that you uh, think would apply. Okay, looks like uh, it's a fairly even spread on all of the items to choose from. Thank you. And question number seven, uh, if you wouldn't mind taking the time to answer 
why you answered number six the way you did on any particular item or option that you were looking at. And Charlene, if you can move that window to the right a little bit, they can see the items below that. Is that me for you, Ro? I don't know if I'm able to move it or if it's just in one place automatically. Oh, I see. Thank you. <clears throat> Gotten a couple of responses. If we get a few more people to respond, that'd be great. Thank you. Sorry about that. Looks like you can't see the detail responses, but we have those recorded. Um, and we heard that biking between Havana Grace and Swan Creek would be a primary use. Um, they one says they've I've seen too many accidents and close calls involving pedestrians and cyclists on US 40. Um, bike paths would promote usage, which also drives benefits to businesses, and it would improve um, their bicycle ride from Abing Abington to Havana Grace. And um, someone else also mentions that they cycle in US 40 to get to Aberdeen. Um, and this would enhance access and would increase attractiveness to both Aberdeen and having a grace to tourists and homeowners respectively. And also there's a need for transportation alternatives and to serve transit dependent citizens in the region. And we also have someone saying they represent um, visit Hartford and to have more connections and um, trails between municipalities is great. Um, and so lastly, so I want to mention they would get more exercise from biking. Thank you everyone for your great responses. So the public comment period is now open until November 27th. And there is the website that your feedback can be uh, provided. And you could also email, text, or voicemail as seen on the screen. And it's also been provided in the chat, a link to the project website, if anyone needs to grab it straight from there. And question number eight, which shared use path option do you prefer? Westbound option was one, eastbound was two, and the combined option was number three. Or no preference. So we've gotten 15 responses, um, now 16. If anyone else wants to respond, we'll get about a few more seconds and then close the poll. Fifty percent responded for option one, the westbound option, and thirteen percent for eastbound, and twenty-five percent for option three combined, and thirteen percent for no preference. Thank you. 
And now we'll look at some of the questions presented in chat and opportunity for additional questions. Thank you so much, Bro and Josh. We really appreciate your presentation that you gave. Um, and we've gotten a lot of comments coming through, a few questions in the Q&A. So I just wanted to summarize some of the comments that we've gotten. Um, there were some people who mentioned that um, assistive scooter use was common along US 40, and there was a lot of crossing at Lewis Lane. Um, someone um, commented that they would prefer a, more than a two foot buffer between the shared use path and US 40. Um, someone else mentioned they love the park drive extension and Another person mentioned the only grocery store in Habitat Grace is on the northern side. And there was another comment about Lewis Lane with the crossing um, being important under any of the options that were cho chosen. Um, we also got a comment that the Ontario Ostego US 40 intersection needs to be reconfigured or considered. Um, for safe bicycle and pedestrian crossing. So I'm going to call on um, Joel Gallahue, Chief of Comprehensive Planning at um, Hartford County to speak to that um, as he's got some, some information that he can share. Thanks very much. Um, one of the ways that we advocate, um, and this is something that we do together with the municipalities, is the annual priority letter that's submitted to the state. And for everyone's reference, I've just posted it into the chat. There's a link to it right there. So you can use that letter as a resource, just like the other um, uh, link that you received earlier. And if you look at it, you'll note that that particular intersection has is something we've been advocating for since 2010. Uh, now, I don't want to disappoint you too much by the fact that it's been so long that we've been advocating for it, but but um, transportation projects do take a very long time. The priority letter process is, is slow, but having that, that, that statement that we've, we've had it in our letter for that long is, is helpful. Having it also come up in this process with this plan as something that's important, I think also adds to it. So I think each, each little piece uh, uh, helps get us closer to a solution. This uh, all another thing I was just going to quickly mention is you might still remember there was a thing called BRAC, which a uh, base realignment and closure, which did have an impact on Aberdeen Proving Ground. And this intersection was identified as a part of that BRAC planning process. So we're still waiting for it. <laughs> so uh, that's what I had for now, but I just wanted to answer that because people had brought up in the, the issue in the chat. Thank you so much for, for that information, Joel. And one thing I would also say is, um, you know, work that we're doing here with this concept plan, that can also be supportive of the work um, with the priority letter that Joel was mentioning. Um, so we got a few more questions. Um, one was, would the presentation that was presented today be available? Um, and yes, a recording of the meeting and the presentation will be available on the project website in the next few days as we get them ready to post. Um, we also had a question if funding is available for the project. So currently um, funding is only available for the concept plan that's currently being executed. Um, funding would then need to be identified for the design phase and then the construction phase of the project. Um, and there are multiple sources um, for potential funding to be accessed. And I'm not able to speak to this, so Joel may be able to, um, but does um, someone asked if this takes into account the new water line between Habitat Grace and Aberdeen? Let's see. Um, yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead. The GIS analysis did not include any data on the water line, but I believe it just follows the road right of way. Um, but, uh, you know, if as we'll make sure to, uh, if there's any issues with that, I, I don't think we have it in our GIS yet. I don't think we have the, the piece of infrastructure, but we they do update. And I'll, I'll double check the sewer and water layer. Maybe they have already fi fixed that, but we'll bring it in. 
Great, thank you, Joel. And I made note that we'll look into that further. Um, see, we've gotten a few comments now. Um, but another question, just wanted to reiterate the presentation and the recording of today's meeting will be available on the project website. Um, let's see. Then we had a comment that since there's sidewalks already on the westbound side of US 40 within Have to Grace, um, they recommend improvements on the eastbound side since there aren't currently any, um, which also would serve to connect um, Route 7 slash Post Road entering, entering into Have to Grace. So we made note of that comment. Um, I think those are all the comments I've gotten so far. And we welcome more. Ro, did you have anything you wanted to interject? Regarding the separation between the roadway and path, it will depend on the edge condition. When we utilize the wide shoulder for trail, we'll be adding curb and gutter to that. And the minimum two foot would be between back of curb and the trail. Uh, when the trail is located off an open section of US 40 without a curb, then it would be at least a 12 foot separation. Uh, and the bioswales or stormwater management would be placed in that strip then between the roadway and trail. So I think it will depend on if curb and gutter is provided for that segment, and that would still provide a safe and comfortable trail for use by the users with at least two foot provided. Sorry about that meeting. Uh, we had a question about the project timeline. So currently um, with the concept plan that we're doing right now, <clears throat> we um, will have the public comment period open for the alternative options until November 27th. Get your guys' comments, respond to them, and then the design team will then take those comments and uh, look at the um, assessment that they did and then make a recommendation for a preferred alignment. So selecting one of the options um, and presenting that. So then we will then have a second public meeting, present that preferred option, and then um, have a comment period after that to get people's feedback. We would then go into um, development of a final concept plan and then have that available. So this project would wrap up, I think around, we're thinking around March of 2023. Now the next step would be getting into design and then after that would be construction and there currently isn't a timeline for that. So we'd have to have um, you know, funding identified and other elements to then proceed to those sections. So that's a little bit of unknown at that point. That was a great question. Um, let's see. We had a request um, for presentation at a city council meeting or at public events. So we will follow up with you on that and see what you're looking for. I've got your name and information. Um, we also had a comment that there's an existing wide shoulder on the east side of US 40, east of Lewis Lane, um, which would be available for a safe pedestrian and hiking trail without dealing with the environment, or is there, sorry, is there an existing wide shoulder on the east side of US 40, east of Lewis Lane, that would be available for safe bike bed trail without dealing with the environmental issues? So that would be a good question for Romaine and Josh to respond to, I think. I don't believe there is at the at that location. And that's why there is no sidewalk there, we think, uh, today. Uh, if there is the next phase of design, if that alternative was selected, then they would be looking at that in more detail to see what available area there is uh, to do that. And I will add that the westbound option has been discussed with SHA and BMC contacted them about that, and they are amenable to uh, looking at use of that available shoulder area, and that helps a great deal to reduce property acquisition needs and reduce environmental impact on option one. Thank you, Rob. 
Um, we also had a question asking if taxes would increase in the cities, um, I think from this project. And no, taxes wouldn't increase as a re result of this planning effort or eventual construction. So thank you for that question. Let's see. Oh, we have another question here about the eastbound section. So that might be Rowan Josh again. If the eastbound um, option was selected, how would we deal with the um, junkyard on that side? And Joel might be able to chime in um, if we're not immediately aware of that location. We didn't look at any design beyond the right of way. We were trying to minimize right of way needs in that area. So we were not looking specifically at that particular property for that aspect of it. I know that zoning enforcement was uh, working on the junkyard, um, but it's a uh, it's one of those complicated cases. Uh, unfortunately, um, Harford County uh, zoning enforcement is um, is uh, it's not as direct. Like when you get caught speeding, you get a ticket. You know, right at the moment when you when it happens. We don't have our zoning enforcement set up with that kind of uh, direct action. So I, I wish we had a better answer, but that's where that is right now. Thank you all. That was helpful context. Let's see. Right now, that's all the comments and questions that we've got, but I'm sure you guys might have some more. So we'll give you all a little bit of time um, to enter those in. And also, if there's something that you think of that, um, you know, you didn't ask today, you can um, go to the project page and add your comments there and we'll respond to them. Um, or you can contact us um, via email. You can contact me as a project manager at um, cmingus at baltometro.org. And I will just drop that in chat so that you have that available. Okay. No more questions so far. Did anybody um, from ACOM or um, with Joel or anybody have any comments that they wanted to provide while we wait and see if there are any more um, questions? or comments. Well, my first observation is the participants really know their, their community. We've had some good comments that are um, quite particular to the project. So I think that's very helpful. And I really wanted to express my gratitude to everybody that took the time to participate. Um, and, uh, you know, later you might think of something. So please don't hesitate to use the link uh, and get it in while we're, everybody's attention is on this project because it'll make for a better final report. Thank you, Joel. That's, yeah, definitely. Thank you for all of your insightful observations and comments and really wonderful questions. Thank you, Bruce. Bruce was just saying um, that he enjoyed hearing the input and is looking forward to seeing this work come to fruition. And, um, we're really excited to get to present this to you all and continue to work on this project and then come back um, with our second public meeting with the preferred option. Thank you. So, but if I'll answer any questions if you get it while I do this um, exit piece, but I just wanted to say thank you for joining us today. Um, and please share additional comments and questions about the project and your preferred alternative option, you know, the westbound option, eastbound option, or combined option through the comment period, which goes through November 27th by visiting publicinput.com backslash US40 bike ped and clicking on the share your thoughts tab.
You can also sign up for the email list on the project page to receive updates about the project, including information about the second public meeting, which will be held in early 2023 to present the preferred option um, and the public outreach efforts that lead to the selection. You can also email us at us40 bikeped at publicinput.com to leave it or leave a voicemail at one 855 Nine two five two eight zero one extension four zero zero nine. You can text with keyword US forty bike ped altogether to two three two two four, and even contact us through Twitter by tagging at Balto Metro CO or at Be More Involved and use the hashtag. BRTV listens. This information was also put into the chat and is available on the project website as well. Just double checking. Thank you all for your great um, comments, thanking us for the presentation. And we just wanna thank you again so much. And at that, we will end the meeting today and please spread the word, share information about this project with your friends and members of the community. The more comments we get, the better project that we will have. So thank you again and have a lovely evening.